Welcome to our Life of Christ class. Uh, I hope to uh, soon have the ability to share with you our PowerPoint presentation. And let me see what we can pull up. Uh, all right. Uh, I apologize for the slowness, but uh, let's see what we can do now. I had earlier started and came up with this. As you can see, this is our <coughs> textbook. And this presentation was originally begun by them, although uh, we are somewhat <clears throat> uh, adding to that. The one we're going to talk about today, or in this session, is uh, what the Middle East was, was like in the days of Jesus, that is, Palestine. More specifically, this presentation has to do with the geography of the land of Palestine. First of all, I want you to know that Israel today is really a very small country. As you can see from this drawing it's, uh, that superimposes on the same scale, it's um, something like maybe one third the size of the state of Alabama. And it's even smaller if you don't count the Palestinian territories or the Southern Desert. As I'm sure that you're uh, familiar with, uh, the um, the state of Israel was only created uh, in very modern times, the, the one that exists today. And much of the territory was supposed to go to Palestinians who were not Jewish. Uh, Gaza is supposed to be a, a self-governing, uh, uh, semi-autonomous state. The West Bank is an area that is supposed to be uh, semi-autonomous. And then up here, the Golan Heights, which are really a part of Syria, are also supposed to be separate. And yet, all of those are included in what we call Israel. When you get below the Dead Sea, uh, there are settlements there, but there, it's just about a desert. And so the actual territory is really a very small uh, area. If we want to look at it again with uh, comparison to the uh, map of Alabama, the Palestine in which Jesus lived was configured differently uh, than today's Israel is. It was mostly the kingdom of Herod. Palestine also included the Decapolis, uh, a group of cities uh, that were independent of uh, Judea and Herod. And uh, if we don't count the southern desert, uh, it was an area that was about 90 miles wide at the widest and about 150 miles uh, north to south. Now, where is Palestine? Of course, you need to know that to get the context for the study of the Gospels. Palestine is the land at the eastern end of the Mediterranean Sea, more specifically the southeastern end. National borders have changed over and over and over throughout history. In biblical times, or when we are talking about biblical times, Palestine is just an area. In modern times, since the creation of the modern state of Israel, we often speak of Palestinian territories like Gaza or the West Bank or the Golan Heights. There are political overtones uh, to the use of that word in modern times. In this study, we're talking about Palestine, the area. The reason it's important is because Jesus lived and taught and died in Palestine, and that's what you need to know. So where is it? I guess you recognize the um, eastern end of the Mediterranean here from Italy over to, uh, to Turkey, and then the, what we call the Middle East. Well, let's look a little bit closer on this map. And now we're even closer. We're just in the area between Egypt and Turkey. And Palestine is really just a very small area where uh, you see the word Jerusalem. And you could generally say it runs from Syria to Egypt. This large area over here is, is desert, and as you move beneath the Dead Sea, as I said, it's largely desert. 
What does it look like? Well, up here we have the, uh, the Galilean hills, uh, one of the hills coming down to the Sea of Galilee. There's a section that we'll uh, call the foothills between the central mountain range and the Mediterranean Sea that is fertile in an area for growing crops. And at the bottom of the mostly inhabited area is the Dead Sea. The Jordan River is the central feature of Palestine. It runs from actually a little bit north of the Sea of Galilee downhill to the Dead Sea, which is in fact the lowest point on earth. Here's a little bit closer look at the Sea of Galilee and the Jordan River and the Dead Sea. As you can see, there are sloping hills around the Sea of Galilee, uh, on the sides of the Jordan River, and these are actually uh, more, uh, more significant cliffs and, and ridges around the Dead Sea. There is a central mountain range. This is in what was the old territory of Judah. This is a broad view, of, a panoramic view of the um, the Judean uh, part of the central hills. You look here, you can see uh, for perspective a roadway. Uh, this picture is uh, looking down in the Sea of Galilee from some of the mountainous areas around it. Your textbook has a very interesting uh, way of looking at how much the elevation changes and how hilly the area is. The hills and mountains roll up and down, and the highest is Mount Hermon in the north. Uh, it rises to 9,000 feet above sea level. Uh, that's higher than uh, any of the Smoky Mountains, but not as high as the Rocky Mountains. Uh, the part that you're probably familiar with would be Jerusalem and Bethlehem, uh, probably uh, Galilee and uh, the Sea of Galilee and, and Nazareth. So you see there are all these hills, comes down here, way up to 9,000. But notice, if you come to the foot of Mount Hermon uh, at 1,000 feet above sea level, you come down here, and look, you've come below sea level by the time you get to the Sea of Galilee. Across the surface of the Sea of Galilee, down through, excuse me, let's go back, uh, down through uh, the plains, and then you follow the Jordan River all the way down to the Dead Sea to where you're uh, at the lowest point on Earth. On the other side of those mountains is uh, the Mediterranean Sea, which is at this level. All of this area is below sea level. This shows that much more clearly. This is a cross section from the other direction. You've got the Mediterranean Sea, and then there's the plains. Then the foothills are called, sometimes called the Shephala, uh, that is uh, where vegetation grows, the moisture comes off the ocean. And uh, then you come up to the hill country of Judea. And if you look at the other direction, uh, from away from the screen to inside the screen, then you've got a mountain range there with Jerusalem as high as 2,600 feet. But if you were to walk down through a really barren area of the Judean wilderness, and keep going down, you would go all the way down from 2,600 feet above sea level to 1,300 feet below sea level. Um, Jerusalem is about the same elevation as, uh, as Alabama, maybe a couple of hundred feet higher. But the most dramatic feature is the Long Jordan Valley, uh, the lowest point on Earth. And uh, it drops from as high as um, 1,200 above to 1,300 below uh, in as little as 10 miles. I want you to be familiar with the geographical regions of Palestine. As we said, the most distinctive feature of the land is the Jordan River and its two seas. The uh, Sea of Galilee up here at the top is not really a sea, it's a lake. Uh, there's a lot of salinity in the uh, Dead Sea, but they're, they're not like a big sea like the Mediterranean Sea. But there is a deep valley all around the Jordan River, and it gets deeper and deeper and deeper. There's a, a large canyon, 
And the Jordan Valley is what Palestine centers around. You've got the Jordan Valley, and if we're talking about Israel, we're usually talking about on this side, on the west side of the Jordan River. On the east side, the terrain rises abruptly. And for our purposes, we're just going to call that the Eastern Mountains. Doesn't really figure into the Gospels. You cross the deep canyon and you come up to what I was pointing out to you before is the Judean well, wilderness, which is barren coming down the mountainside, way down, way down, way down to the Jordan Valley. East of the wilderness, the terrain continues to rise in what we're going to call the Western Mountains, or down in the South, you might call them the Judean Mountains. If you notice, there's a little area here of a pass, but there's mostly mountains in the middle. East of that, <coughs> that we've put in green, is uh, the Shephala. The, the foothills are a place where you are uh, the, the ground is not so mountainous where you can produce crops. And this similar area in the Jezreel Valley and up around Galilee and even north of there. The final area is the coastal plain. It's a fairly narrow strip along the Mediterranean. Those are the physical geographic regions of Palestine. Now, we also need to be aware of the political situation, that is, the political geography of Palestine. It was mostly the kingdom of Herod and his heirs, and the area called the Decapolis, which I have in this striped section. The Decapolis is 10 independent cities. And then all of this area, the purple, the blue, the green, the orange, these areas are ruled by Herod the Great, at least at the beginning of the life of Christ. This is the map that you have in your textbook. And you'll notice it divides up Herod's kingdom to his heirs. The pink area, which is oddly divided by a little bit of the Decapolis, Galilee to Perea, uh, to the northwest of the Jordan and Next to the Sea of Galilee is Galilee. Down below there, more to the northeast of the Dead Sea, is an area called Korea, and it does figure into the life, uh, into the life of Christ. By that time, this large area that's in green on this map had been handed over to uh, an heir of uh, of Herod the Great but he didn't last long and the Romans just took it over. The areas, uh, this um, purple area was ruled by a, uh, a Herod Philip that really doesn't figure that much in the story of the New Testament. And so then this yellow area is controlled by Syria. That seems to have ended uh, the geographic lesson. There'll be another one coming up for you soon.